everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another classroom prep video. If this is your first time here, my name is Tressa and I'm a fifth year, fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make lots of teaching and learning videos here on YouTube and I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. <laughs> Saturday and I am back in my classroom to take on a classroom prep video. If you are new around here, every now and then I put together one of these videos and take you along as I tackle some minor and major projects around my room. So throughout the past couple of weeks, I have kept a little notepad beside my desk and just throughout the day, if I notice something that is bothering me or that I really want to get done, I jot it down. And the reason that I do that is because often when I walk into my classroom on the weekends or in my free time, I look around and I'm like, oh, I want to get that done. And oh, I should do that. And oh, I forgot I wanted to do that too. And it really is overwhelming. And then I also have a hard time like prioritizing the actual tasks I want to get done versus the things that I need to get done. So when I have my list and I get here, I already know what I am going to get up to today. So today I actually don't have anything like major that I perhaps like have to do, but um, I do have some things that I think if I can accomplish them today, my classroom will run a little bit more efficiently. I love coming in on the weekends when it's just me and I can just tackle things without having my students here or other teachers because <laughs> I love my students and I love all the teachers in my building, but um, I definitely get distracted very easily. So I work a lot better when it is just me here by myself. Anyway, I'm excited to take on some of the things that I have planned today. So I hope I am able to give you some ideas that you could incorporate into your own classroom. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. Quickly, before I get started, when I come in on a Saturday, I always try to set a timer for myself for a certain amount of time so that I do not move into the school and live here. So today it is already about 2.30. I always stay home and like enjoy my morning and just take things slow. I'm never in a rush to get here because I have to do that Monday through Friday. So I don't want to do that on Saturdays too. So today I'm hoping to be home by like 5.30 or 6. So I think that I will set my timer for three hours and when it goes off that means like whatever I'm doing I can either take home and finish up or I can just stop where I'm at and be okay with whatever I got done in that period of time that I had so I am gonna start my timer and we can get started later but I wanted to start with any of the laminating that I had to do because I just like to get that out of the way and I actually had a lot of laminating to do for some of the things I wanted to get done so I got that done right away now what I wanted to do was make all the months 
days of the week and actual dates. And the reason I wanted to do this was just to put magnets on them and have them ready to go. So instead of writing the date on the board in the morning, I'll just pop these up. Obviously, it is not something I needed to do, like I'm fully capable of writing the date on the board in the morning, but I really will like the way that this looks better than me writing on the board. So I just decided that I wanted to do it. Now, I have a million and ten magnets, and I bought all sorts because I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do this and what would actually stick. So I always buy these like self-adhesive magnet squares, or I believe these ones are called, yes, magnet wonder dots. And I just get these at my local dollar store. I also have the magnet sheets so I can cut them out for some of the bigger ones. So I'm just going to cut these out. The other thing that I did was I printed off time cards to add to our schedule. And I just found this cute little clock template on Teachers Pay Teachers. So I printed off every time for... Um, anything that happens like throughout the day. However, I typically just put the times up for some of like the major things. So like morning announcements, first block, recess, lunch, and the end of the day. But I thought just in case um, I would make them for everything and that way I have them, they're all matching. I'll put magnets on them and then just see how I end up using them. Maybe I won't use every single time marker, but maybe I'll put a few more up just to kind of help my kids realize like the flow of the day. Sometimes they're like, what time do we have this at? And I think that would just kind of answer the question and also help them with like actually telling the time so that they can look at what time something is supposed to happen and then look up at the clock on the wall and figure out what time it is. The other thing that I made, and I'm gonna show you how all this turns out because I am gonna get it set up. One of the outcomes in grade five is to do like a graphing unit. And so, I had this idea and I actually got it from another teacher, but like modified it a little bit last year and I called it like survey of the day. So I put a little title up and then I made all of my students cards. So this is my card, for example, and it just has my name on it. And there's magnets on these cards. And so then I assign a student to be in charge of a survey question. So they might say, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? And then give like four options, Rocky Road, French vanilla, um, chocolate, strawberry, whatever. And then everyone put takes their name and puts it in the proper category. And then towards the end of the day, when everyone has answered the survey question, we graph our results. And so I just thought it was kind of like a fun and more engaging way of teaching my kids graphing because instead of just giving them data, which I also do, this is like also teaching them how to collect data and then interpret the data. So sometimes I'll get them to interpret it versus like boys versus girls. Sometimes we will sort it literally by the four options that are given. Sometimes we'll um, sort it by age or height. Like we use all of these different kinds of variables. So I wanted to get that set up so that Monday it is up on the whiteboard and I can explain the concept to my students because we are starting like full throttle our graphing unit on Monday. So I'm gonna spend the next few minutes just deciding what magnets I wanna put on what, and then I will show you getting everything set up on the whiteboard.
you guys, I can't show you this whole thing because obviously the cards have my students' names on them. But the concept is that you put um, the survey of the day title, the kids can write their question, and then write the answers or the possible choices the kids have, and then they're able to move their magnet with their name on it to the spot that they answer. So again, just an idea that another teacher shared with me that her students were doing like naturally on their own. So I just put it into like perspective with the curriculum. I just think my kids are more engaged when they form the questions and the possible answers. And then we're talking about like us as a class and our choices versus just like some data I'm getting online or like on a worksheet. All right, you guys, a little bit of organization next. So I was actually at Winners the other day and Winners is like the equivalent of like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, those kinds of stores. <laughs> anyway, Winners is my favorite place to be pretty much in the whole world. <laughs> anyway, I found this acrylic organizer and it has different sized drawers and I love it because I have this one, but it's old and like dusty to the point where like when I clean it the dust doesn't even come off so it's a little bit gross and also the drawers are all really very small on this one whereas I have more stuff that I then have to keep in like desk drawers because it won't fit so I am going to figure out how I want to organize this and I just keep it right on my desk so that um I can grab whatever I need out of it All right, you guys, I'm actually so excited about this thing because it really helped me declutter and I loved having the bigger drawers. So in here, I just put all of my push pins. I've got my smaller paper clips, um, some binder rings, some fasteners, a bunch of rubber bands, my bigger clips, a ton of paper clips, all of my stick on magnets that I use all the time, my magnetic hooks, and some stickers. These are kind of forced in here, but I love having my stickers on my desk because I use them so much. And lately I've had them in my back cupboard and had to go digging for them and it's driven me crazy. So I really wanted to make them fit even if it's not perfect. So loving this acrylic organizer. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so upset. I bought this at Michael's in the beginning of the school year and I was just going to flip to March and the March one says May. So it goes May, April, May. I'm so disappointed. I'm gonna have to like flip it over and write March on it or something. How rude is that? All right, you guys, I have this awkward space right here. And as I was going through some classroom decor stuff from previous years, I found that I had a couple of frames that I didn't put up this year. So I thought that it would be super cute. I used to have a welcome sign, I know you can't see, but above my door, but it fell down this week and I had it up with command strips and everything. So I kind of don't want to go through all the process of getting it back up. I might eventually, but I don't think I'm going to right now. So I'm going to try this instead. <music> Okay, you guys, jokes on me because once I was looking up above my door, I didn't like that there was nothing there. So I am going to hang the welcome sign back up. <laughs> hey guys, obviously it is a couple of days later. It's Monday now and I got cut a little bit short due to some technical difficulties. And honestly, I think it was like seven or 7.30 before I left here. So, so much for my like set your watch tip. 
But anyway, I'm really impressed with like how much I got done and I just feel better like walking in Monday morning and seeing all of the work that I did. Like I do feel good about coming in on Saturday, but I ended on a bit of a sour note because I was having some technical difficulties with um, Microsoft Office and a couple of the things that I wanted to get done were my March newsletter and calendar and also get a new seating plan for my kids. But Microsoft Office was telling me that I was in view only mode and that I couldn't edit any of my documents. So I was like ferociously opening like every document and seeing what I could do and trying to fix it and like restarting my computer and re like signing out and logging into Microsoft. Anyway, nothing was working. So yesterday um when the problem was persisting i emailed like our tech guy and hopefully he can help me today anyway i figured i might as well just keep rolling and there's a couple more things i want to do today obviously i'm gonna have my kids in the classroom here with me today but i do have some time at recesses and also during a prep to get a few things done so i will let you know anything that i get done today that i also kind of had on my list to finish for my classroom prep and we will finish up this portion of the video today. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on because I wanted to share something else that I put together on Saturday, but didn't have the opportunity to share with you. And I've talked about booklets before, but this year, especially with COVID, I'm really trying to make booklets of everything because um, any of the classes that I know that have had to like go into quarantine, it's really important to have work to send home with the kids because while um, many classes have the capability of sending technology home, not all students necessarily have that capability at home. So it's good to have paper copies. So I've really been trying in like math, in some language arts, if we have like a whole unit, I will try to print off like anything that I think we might use throughout that unit and put it in a booklet. So graphing is our unit right now. And I know I showed you my like survey of the day idea. So that's something interactive that we'll do in the classroom. But this is just a bunch of different types of graphs. So I have the bar graph, section and then we move on to a pictographs and I have a few pages of that and then we have line graphs and then we finish off with pie charts so this is just like a variety of graphs this gives information it allows kids to collect information interpret data and put it into different types of graphs as well as reading graphs so the reason that I do this is definitely partly because it saves me planning time. Like I, I plan it all out and then I'm good to go. I've copied everything I need to copy, but also partly because it is very COVID friendly and helps me feel a little bit more prepared in case something were to ever come up. So I put that together on Saturday so that I have my graphing unit ready to go in terms of that like obviously the interactive stuff is all up to me and I kind of have all that stuff different like on the smart board and things like that but this is any of the worksheets that we'll use throughout this unit all right guys one of the other things that I really badly need to do is switch out my January February books for my March and April books if you're new to my channel I store my picture books in these bins and I have them labeled and so I do two months per bin and they're just like mentor texts and seasonal books and like books for certain holidays and things that might come up and I switch them out every two months and it really works well it's something that I kind of just adapted this year but it allows me not to keep all the books in my classroom and just the ones that we're actually going to use so I'll take these ones home and put out my spring and St. Patrick's Day Easter kind of books and also my fairy tales because we're gonna do a fairy tales unit coming up here Right, there's one more thing I wanted to share with you and this isn't really classroom prep but perhaps an art idea 
my kids made these like Minecraft or like pixelated characters versions of themselves. And I think they're so cute. And I had them not write their name on the front so that they could come up and guess who's who. Anyway, they turned out so cute. And some of them focused really hard on like attention to detail. So an excellent art idea and super simple. Like they just needed the graph paper and then pencil crayons. All right, you guys, it's the end of the day. My Microsoft Office never ended up getting fixed today. So um, I wasn't able to do all the things I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to show you how I organized my seating plan for the kids and also my March newsletter and calendar. I did share my January newsletter and calendar a while back. So you could check that one out if you're curious and I'm sure I'll share them in the future. But anyway, I'm just like, I was set on what I wanted to share with you and it didn't quite work out, but I'm trying to make the most of this and still have a video up for you. I will just quickly share this. I obviously wasn't able to give my kids a new seating plan because I didn't have the chart available um, in my Microsoft Word, but I did have my kids complete this. So they write their name, three people that they work well with and one person that they do not work well with. So we've had multiple discussions about like positive and negative working relationships and the fact that like your best friend might actually be the person that you don't work well with because that's somebody that you're tempted to chat with all the time. But anyway, I love these because it really gives me a good idea of who gets along well with one another and more so their feelings. Like I feel like I have an opinion of who gets along well with one another and works well with one another, but it's nice to kind of get a glimpse into their lives as well. Anyways, I hope this ends up giving you some ideas. I kind of feel like I got a little bit done, not a ton, but I am super happy with some of the tasks that I did and they were things that I was hoping to get accomplished. Some of them were definitely like aesthetically pleasing for me, but I am that type of person. Like I like to have things as they are in my classroom. And so I felt really good coming in this morning and seeing some of the things that I had accomplished on Saturday. Anyway, if you did enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed because I planned out all of my March videos and I'm really excited. I have a lot of good ones coming at you. I am filming a what I eat in a week at school this week and I also have a special little project coming your way in April. So hit that red subscribe button so you are following along and I will see you in my next one.